Hi, my name is Brian. Today I'm going to be showing you this cool rig and how I build out my Komodo for productions. So there's a couple reasons why I built the rig like this. Uh, first reason was I liked the feel of the Komodo. I never liked the handheld feel of it when it was rigged up tiny. It just didn't have the same kind of sway and it may be user error, but I just didn't like it as much as some other cameras and so I just needed something bigger. I needed to rig it up for that reason. Number two was toughness and durability. I wanted something where it's basically got an exoskeleton, a frame on it that you know makes this thing bulletproof for the rigors of any production environment. And number three is just making it more conducive to being useful on a production environment. So throwing on follow focuses, throwing on transmitters, all those things, just making sure there's enough mounting points where I can put this anywhere and still have a bunch of places to grab the camera. And so those are kind of the, the three main reasons for why the rig exists. Besides that, I just love rig building, it's fun, it's heavy. So if you're gonna shoot handheld all day with it, you probably want an easy rig or some sort of support system. You can still reach the screen. It's not as easy as when the screen's completely unobstructed, but I mean, you can still do all those little things. Uh, there's about 50 steps to build this rig, so let's, let's jump right in. And if you wanna try and follow along and build this yourself, links to all the parts used are in the description below. Here is everything that's gonna go into the build. Let's get started. Okay, first item to build it is Red Komodo. First piece is this base plate by Condor Blue. Next up we have the chin strap for the lens mount support. Next up we have our PL lens mount. And we'll lock that in place by tightening this screw on the bottom so that there's no swivel. Next we have our cartridge for the revolver. It has some different stops of ND in there. And we'll just slide that right in there. And then tighten that. So one thing I like about the kipper tie being fixed ND values is since it's not variable, you don't get any of that weird banding when you uh, shoot into polarized glass or like a windshield or something like that that you do with variable NDs. Next, we're gonna put on the red outrigger handle. You'll see why there's a screw missing there in just a sec. And there it is, that's the final rig, the perfect production rig. Thanks for watching, you guys. Just a joke. Next, we put on this Arca Swiss top plate by Wooden Camera. Make sure it has this long screw in it that comes with it so that it can reach through the outrigger handle. Insert the included top plate, tighten it down. Next, we have this little NATO rail. We're gonna put it in these holes right here. Next, we have this little monitor mount from Small Rig. Love these ones, rock solid. We'll put it right up here in the front with the airy locating pins. These guys are just a classic Small Rig NATO top handle. Nice and simple, love these ones. And we're gonna slide that onto the NATO rail with the cold shoe mount facing forward. Center it up, more or less, and lock that down. Now we take one of these guys. These are one of the key components to the build. They're small rig handle extenders. They oftentimes go out of stock, so just watch B&H. It'll say no longer available, but they go in stock every couple weeks or every couple months. I've also linked uh, one by Tilta in the description. I haven't tried theirs, but those are the only two affordable ones I see. Other than that, you can buy these from like Ari or Wooden Camera, but they're stupid expensive. So keep an eye out for these guys. And he'll just screw in on the back just like this. And bam, now you got a long top handle. Kind of nice. Now, best bang for your buck with a battery plate. I really like these core ones. They're sleek, there's no cables, it transmits battery information, and they're pretty affordable. So I have the gold mount version, you'll see why. You could use a V-mount version on this, but you're gonna wanna make sure the battery probably comes out sideways rather than up. You'll see why later. So for the monitor, we're using the Portkey's BM72. I like this because it's a seven inch monitor. It's really bright. It wirelessly connects to the Komodo so I don't have to have a cable running down for camera control. And it's pretty affordable. Plus for seven inches, it's pretty lightweight. And here we go. We're gonna pop in a CFast card by Angelbird, one terabyte. All right, so this is the base of our build. Obviously you could use the camera like this, but we're not building a run and gun rig. We're building a rig out for production. So let's keep going. So next we have this base plate by Wooden Camera. What I like about it is the quick release right here. So every time you take your camera off, you attach this to your tripod plate and you put it on, lock it in, and your camera's balanced on your tripod every time you take it on and off, which really matters when you have a heavier build. First, we're gonna attach this to the bottom. Okay, so we have some 18 inch rods here. This is gonna be the base of our build basically. We have 16 inches in the description if you think 18 inches is too big, but I like this just in case if we're throwing on longer lenses or anything like that. Slide those into around there and we'll lock it in, kind of loose for now. Next, we're gonna put a 15 millimeter rail block right on these holes right here. I'm gonna take off the top handle to do this. And so when you tighten it down, make sure you put pressure on one end so it ends up straight and not crooked like that. Now I'm gonna put some 12 inch rods into those. 
and push those in right before they touch the monitor mount and lock them down. Hi, this is Brian from the future. These should actually be 10 inch rods, not 12 inch rods. So ignore what I'm saying here and you're gonna see me correct it later on. But for now, the build's gonna continue with 12 inch rods and we'll replace these soon. We're gonna take another one of these and this SDI isolator to protect our SDI port and screw that in right there. Voila, slide that on the back and plug in the SDI cable. Now we take two little right angle SDI elbows and put them on this so that we can access the port easier. And now that SDI port is offset for easier access and this makes it really easy to do a proper SDI shutdown because you just pull it right there, it's right up here, you don't have to get down here or go on the monitor or anything, you just take it out and you're good to go. Okay, we're gonna set the Komodo to the side for a second and build this next piece. So first we're gonna grab this old beefy small rig cheese plate and another one of these guys with some screws in him and just screw him right on the bottom. Again, pushing on one side so it's even. Now we're gonna take another one of these guys, lay it right up there, and then I have two 70 millimeter NATO rails. I would recommend these high rise ones rather than the low rise ones as they have a little bit more travel in here for adjustability. And we're gonna basically attach this piece onto there using those. And now I'm not gonna screw these on super tight just so we can adjust them later. Then we'll line up on the cheese plate and find two holes to screw into. Again, not screwing too tight. Now on the side without the NATO rails, I'm gonna attach this D-tap splitter right around there. And since it's plastic, I'm just gonna hand tighten it. And now we have this little DIY homemade back plate, super sturdy. And this is why we left everything loose is because we're gonna put it on here and then adjust everything so it fits. So we'll kind of unscrew everything so everything can move freely. Undo all these, undo our bottom rails. And so I'll first tighten in one of these guys at the top, tighten the other guy in because that's the first thing to move. After doing that, I'll bring these guys in, in the bottom, line it up with about the back right here and tighten him up and do another one right over here and tighten him up and then I'll go through, tighten the bottom, tighten the bottom, tighten the top, tighten the top, tighten the top here, tighten the top here. And then last thing that we'll wanna do is, this is still kind of wiggly, I mean, it'll feel pretty tight, but now you can tighten these screws in at the position that they're set in. All right, so the reason we're using NATO rails right back here is for adjustability. So let's say, you know, you don't have these exact pieces and this distance is a little bit greater, then what you can then do is extend it using this. So it's kind of a little DIY homemade solution for making it fit different size rigs. And now you basically have this sturdy block of a frame where we're gonna use this to kind of build the rest of the rig out. Next, we're gonna take a handle similar to the one up top. This one's not NATO. And we're gonna put it on this back plate right here with the cold shoe part facing downwards. And I'm putting mine right about in the middle and we're gonna leave it kind of loose for now. Perfect. And so here's kind of the skeleton of the rig. Now we're gonna build the backbone, which gives it a lot of support, which is this handle right up here. So we're gonna grab three more of these top handle extenders. First one right here, tighten them up. Another one right there, tighten them up. And then we got one going right here, tighten them up. So quick mistake up here, these should not be 12 inch rods, they should actually be 10 inch rods. So we're just gonna replace those really quick. So as I said, using 10 inch rods, we're gonna slide this back plate back on. We're gonna keep these front ones loose for now. This one can stay tight and we're gonna loosen the bottom ones. Okay, so now we have our handle extensions up here. We have this one back here. Okay, now that we're here, you're gonna see this top handle is super wobbly. Of course, we're not gonna leave it like that. Basically, our next step is loosen all these components up here so we can adjust this back and forth till it comes to kind of a meeting point on here. So after loosening my handles and these rail blocks up here, I'm gonna take this piece, which is a right angle 3 8 adapter, mostly used for mounting like wireless mounting options and whatnot, and I'm just gonna screw it in right here. And again, not going too tight with it. Then I'll begin to screw it into the top handle. Okay, so now that we're here and everything's kind of loose, what we really want to do is make sure we tighten it where it's in a right angle over here, but we're also looking at this, you know, with the camera, with the lens axis and making sure it doesn't get skewed to one side or anything. So the way we do that is kind of just line up everything by sight and then tighten things little by little. So first I'm tightening these back plates right here. Now on the NATO rail on the top here, making sure that's aligned with the center of the camera. This right angle adapter is now tightened and these are the only loose parts right on the handle. So I'm gonna turn it sideways, find it at the angle it should be at, and then just tighten these bolts down. And put the Allen key right back in there where he belongs. Okay, here is the basis of the rig. I'm gonna take this cable and cable management him a little bit. Now let's take one of these nano batteries, really like these guys for the size, and click him right in there. If I wanna adjust him and push him back, I just 
unscrew this knob, unscrew this knob, and I can kind of slide the camera back. And so there we go, we have the basic build of the rig with this strong backbone that you can basically just, I mean, it's not, it's not shaking at all. This thing is uh, sturdy as can be. So let's keep rigging it out. Next, for easy access for a remote follow focus, I'm gonna put this rod mount right here. And this piece has locating pins, so once you screw them in, he's not twisting at all, which is super nice. And I like this piece because the handle is just a little bit bigger, so it gives you more leverage to really crank down that piece. I'm gonna put an eight inch rod right in there. This is a good length just for getting out to a lens for a follow focus. Next, I'm gonna take this little NATO rail with another 15 millimeter rod holder and put it right here. I like having a NATO rail right here. That way I can take the small rig EVF mount holder and use it to mount a monitor right out here if I'm going shoulder rig configuration with this. Here we have the small rig mini mat box pro with this little mat box mount. I'm just gonna attach that onto here. My reason for mounting the mat box onto the rails is because some vintage glass like this will extend when you focus it. And so this just keeps the pressure off of the lens when you're focusing and puts it onto the rails. Here is a wooden camera B box. I plug it into the Komodo. It gives me run stop capabilities from a follow focus and I can run my time code into it. Since it's not a great place to put it on, I've just been bongo tying it right here on the rig for the past couple months and it's been super sturdy right there. So that's where we're gonna put it. And there it is, nice and sturdy, doesn't clink around, works great. So we're close to the end of the build. I'm gonna use these sprig pieces for cable management. You just put them in any hole and they'll kind of hold on. And then I have this small rig clamp piece, which it'll just hold the cable in place a little bit more. So I'll use that for the power cable right here. Put a sprig here, put a sprig in the back and we'll save the rest for accessories. So I've checked my monitor and my Komodo both have power, so now I'm gonna put this SDI cable. This one's really beefy and it's right angled and straight. So I'll put the right angle side into the monitor and the straight side into this offset SDI port that we made earlier. And now that the SDI is in, I'll move this back so that I have a little more room for it. Next, we're gonna throw on a lens. Okay, so now that we have a lens on, you can see that with the rail support for the mat box, everything is just really rock solid on there. The whole point of building this rig out was that, so you, I mean, you could hit it from every which way angle and nothing's gonna shake, nothing's gonna break on it. And so uh, here we are, let's keep adding a couple more things on to finish it up, but this is the base of the rig. So here are my go-to handles, they're from Shape. They have this button quick release, which I was nervous it wasn't gonna be very sturdy at first, but as you can see, it's pretty rock solid uh, compared to some other quick release handles that I've used. And these are my favorite. So. Let's lock that on right there on the base plate. And then you have that front handle right there, ready to go. And you can see I made this handle short. Instead of putting on the base plate, I'm gonna attach this guy to the top rails right up here. And that'll give me another handle right here to play with. And so now you can see I have two rock solid handles right here that are pretty easily adjustable. So when you're holding it with an easy rig, you can kind of just get a nice sway like that. Super easy to then grab from the top right over here. Or if you wanna look up, grab it like that and then switch these any which way, put the other one on there, and you're on a shoulder. Nice, and just like that, we got handles. So here's some footage of me adding on wireless, follow focus, time code, just things that you would add on to this rig if you were building it up to this size. You're typically using it in a team or a production environment where you're gonna need these things on your rig. So here's where I put them on mine. And there is one last thing I wanted to show you. Here's my favorite camera bag. It's the shaped camera bag, and it fits just perfectly in here. Just nuzzle it in. Close it up, and you're ready to take this thing wherever. So, simple as that, that's the build. Here is the Komodo all rigged out, fully ready to go on a production. As you can see with the handles, it's super easy to then go into you know a shoulder mounted mode, and then you have your little NATO rail for EVF or putting the monitor down there, and then you just go right back up, and boom. Uh, thanks you so much for watching. If you have any questions or any comments or anything like that at all, feel free to reach out. Hope you learned something today. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and a good month and a great year. And I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.